All right, that's for you guys. Hope you enjoy that. And on to proving more identities. So the first one here, we're going to just go through three here. Tan squared, and then cotangent squared theta plus one. All right. So this one's nice because we have Pythagorean identities everywhere. In this one, the top tan squared plus 1 is going to be secant squared theta. The bottom is going to be cosecant squared theta. And to continue this, I'm going to rewrite this all in terms of sine and cosine. So this is going to be 1 over cosine squared theta, all over 1 over sine squared theta. All right. And then we're going to do the keep switch flip. We're going to keep the 1 over cosine squared theta. We're going to switch it to multiplication. Then we're going to times by the reciprocal of what we're actually dividing by. So this is going to be sine squared theta all over 1, which this turns out to be just sine squared over cosine squared, which that is actually tan squared theta. Ah, oh, and I forgot in the very beginning, that was our target. Well, that was kind of like a simplifying problem. Um, that is our end right there. Now let's move on. Example number two. All right, we're going to have tan x all over tan of x plus cotangent of x. We want to show that this is equal to sine squared of, of x. All right. So the first thing I, I think of here is if I could rewrite these things in terms of sine and cosine, my life might be a little easier. So sine over cosine on top. And I know I'm dropping the x, but it's the only variable. So it's just a lot faster sometimes when there's just one variable. OK, so everything is in terms of sine and cosine. And by the way, there's no really easy way to know when you should be doing that or not. Um, sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. So um, what I say is if you change it in the sine and cosine and it doesn't help you, then do something else. All right, so back to this. We're going to find common denominators on the bottom. And this means we have to times by sine over sine and this by cosine over cosine. So I get that common denominator of sine and cosine. All right. So this is sine over cosine all over, and that's going to be one fraction down there. We're going to have sine squared over here. We're going to have cosine squared there. And we also have sine cosine on the bottom. All right. <clears throat> you may notice this right here is 1. So this really turns out to be sine over cosine all over 1 over sine cosine. All right, and again, we're going to be doing the, the fraction trick where when you divide by a fraction, you flip and multiply. So we have sine over cosine, and then we're going to times by sine cosine over 1. Now the cosines here will cancel, so I'm ending up with sine times sine, which is sine squared of x. This is exactly what we wanted. All right. Last example here. Now, I'm showing this one because there are some issues with negatives. Sometimes um, you end up with a negative using a Pythagorean identity, and often students will drop it. So I'm going to show you an example how to keep it in. All right, so first thing I notice when I see this is that cosine squared minus 1 is very close to a Pythagorean identity. And when you're thinking that, just write it out quickly. Now, I need cosine squared minus 1. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. And then I'm going to subtract sine over. So this would be... Cosine squared minus 1 equals negative sine squared. So when I see cosine squared minus 1, I'm just going to replace it. Now, leaving everything around it, 
I now have a negative sine x downstairs with a 1 out on the side. Okay, so this sine and sine will cancel, and that's okay. The issue here is that now we have, you can think of it like a negative 1 underneath the fraction in the denominator. So what that's like is like if we were to flip the signs of 1 plus sine x. Um, so this would be negative 1 plus negative sine x, and then the plus 1 from the outside. Okay, now that negative 1 and positive 1 cancel, so my answer is going to be negative sine x. Oh, goodness. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting in my setup to actually write out our goal. Um, but there it is, negative sine x. So just be careful about this minus. And again, whenever you're thinking it might be a Pythagorean identity, just take the time to write it out. Um, it doesn't hurt.